Did you hear that? Oh, come on. Listen harder. Did you hear that? Oh, okay. Well, of course you didn't hear it because that was my body talking to me. And I'm not going crazy, just so you know. Today I want to talk to you about listening to your body and how we have the most amazing kinesthetic being and tools within our hands that far outweighs a lot of diagnostic tools in hospitals. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, I think they're absolutely amazing. If I break my bone, I don't want to just kind of guess myself and think, well, I just know my bone's broken, so I'm just going to have it rebroke or set, or that kind of thing. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how you as the human mammal have a connection to your physical body. And when we are really connected to our physical body, it's communicating things to us all the time. But there's different messages. And what we need to do is to start to understand and learn what the communication is saying to us and the different things it's trying to communicate. So here's an example. People will have experiences of craving certain foods at certain times in their life. And that can actually be because you have a nutritional deficiency. Okay, so you might crave, you know, um, citrus when you're vitamin C deficient. Okay, something like that. Now, don't confuse this with what some people have said to me. You know, I was listening to my body, and I'm not joking, this is absolutely true. I, a woman in Australia once said to me, she said, I was listening to my body, and I just woke up, and I just knew I needed sugar, so I had like a Mars bar and a Coke for breakfast. And she did not break a smile. She was absolutely certain, and that was her version of listening to her body. And it's true, her body was screaming at her, Mars bar, Coke, okay? But that's because she was totally addicted to those things. She was a complete sugar addict. I know it because I've been there, right? Um, but that message is not actually the healthy part of your body communicating to you. It is now the imbalance in your body and the you know microorganisms in the gut that are overgrown that are actually literally speaking speaking to you to feed them more, right? So how do we distinguish the difference? Well, in most cases, those strong kind of craving, really you know loud messages are usually our addiction talking to us. When it is your body that's actually communicating to you to tell you whether you need something or maybe something that you're eating eating has not, is not actually sitting well with you, tends to be a little bit more subtle. So you can actually have cravings for foods. And I'll tell you this, if you're craving a food and it comes in a shiny package and it has lots of ingredients in it and chemicals in it and it's highly refined, <laughs> that's addiction talking to you, okay? Even if it's just ice cream and it has five ingredients in it and one of them is refined sugar, or even if it's just like dairy, that is addiction talking to you. The body actually, when it's craving a nutrient that it's deficient in, is usually a lot more subtle. And one thing your body will actually communicate to you is when you've had something and it's not sitting well with you, it comes out in different ways. And it's usually not just after we've eaten it, although sometimes it can be something as subtle as you just burp. And you'll burp up the flavor of the thing that your body's actually having a problem with. Now, it can be this is where it gets a little confusing because you can actually burp up the sensation of a banana. And you're not allergic to bananas, but it could be that you're having conventional bananas or even organic bananas that have been shipped um, and dipped in solutions to make sure that they don't have you know, um, funguses growing in them. And it's not that your body's allergic to bananas, it's allergic to the way the bananas have actually been treated, as I talk about in the crazy banana story in Return to Food. Okay. So, the body is constantly speaking to us. If you look at a book by Dr. David Hawkins, who is a kinesiologist who did these studies over 25 years and longer, he would actually do strength tests and he would take an audience and he'd hold up an organic apple and a conventional apple. The audience didn't know which was which, but when he held up the organic one and they did the strength testing, their arms kept strong. And when he held up the conventional ones and did the testing, the arms went weak. Okay, I know for some of you it's really challenging and you're going to think that's all a bit woo-woo. But remember, we are a mammal. And as a mammal, we have been given strong kinesthetic abilities. There have been many examples of animals in nature who actually can tell the difference between organic and conventional or something that is toxic and something that is healthy. But animals in captivity, as they're actually testing them, 
and they're exposing them to refined and processed foods or depriving them of stimulus and connection with other animals will start to behave in unnatural ways. Really important to understand. So when they did a rat study and they gave the rat on its own a choice between alcohol and water, it would choose the alcohol. When they took the same rat and put it into a social setting with other rats, you know, who were actually had social interactions, the rat always chose the water. They've done other studies with rats where they have deprived the rat of good nourishing food and fed it a junk food diet. When it was given a choice between the alcohol and water, it chose the alcohol. When they took that same rat and they nourished it and removed the malnourishing foods from their diet and gave them a choice between the water and alcohol, they chose the water. So like rats, we are a mammal. And what happens is we are always seeking pleasure over pain. When we're malnourished, we will often choose substances that give us pleasure when we haven't been able to replicate it in our lives. And when we're nourished, we're much less likely to choose the substances and the foods that might make us feel good, you know, temporarily, but will make us feel bad long term. Another piece, mammals, us humans, just like the rats, have a great de deal of desire of connection and having a social structure around them. And as we tend to separate from those social structures, we um, live through our computers and our mobile phones and we don't rely on one another, that feeling of disconnection is very similar for our bodies and our life of being malnourished. We are malnourished of quality connection. So if you're starting to listen to your body, the first thing you need to do is to get quiet, okay? There's so much noise around us. The best thing you can do is to eliminate highly processed foods because they have no benefit to your life apart from the addictive responses that they're creating and maybe a bit of short-term discomfort that they might be pushing around or distracting you from. And when you get quiet and you start to observe the subtle and not so subtle messages of your body, you learn to distinguish between the addictive responses and basically the nurse, you know, your body communicating as to what it truly needs. And you start to listen to the side that's actually going to nourish you. And you start to ignore the voice of addiction. You will start to be making what we call at Sweet Freedom strong choices for a strong life which really is the key when you're listening to your body to obtaining sweet freedom. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up and like it. Subscribe to the channel and share it with people you care about that can benefit from this. And join our incredibly supportive Facebook group. And lastly, if you're looking to get sugar-free naturally, follow the links below and find out more about the Sweet Freedom Online program.